here we go. Here we go. Let me tell you, it has been a long season. Let me tell you, it's been a long season. And getting through this season was just, you know, crazy. Crazy season of college football. We still have contenders. Still way more contenders than there are spots left. Last year was a little bit more clear cut, you know, with five, six teams. This year we have about seven, you know, maybe eight in the conversation still as we head into the first week of December, which is conference championship week. Conference crowns are indeed coming. And so week 13 came and went that Thursday night game, you know, on Thanksgiving night, Black Friday, and all day Saturday of rivalry games, rivalry games, hatred, brotherly love, all sorts of different feelings going and ebbing and flowing. And Michigan, of course, you know, overwhelmed Ohio State in the second half. Don't get it twisted. Ohio State put up a good fight. They put up a very good fight, you know. But at the end of the day, I felt more comfortable, you know, saying that, you know, yet again, Michigan had a strong second half that just overwhelmed the Buckeyes for the third consecutive year. Three years in a row. You know, you can't count the COVID year. Michigan said, no, we're not playing the COVID year. So, really, it's been four years. It's been a whole group of graduates that did not beat Michigan, which is crazy. A whole group of graduates, a whole group of guys, you know, not even everybody is getting drafted from Ohio State, but a whole group of guys are graduating. They haven't beaten Michigan. They haven't beaten Michigan at all. They're on the wrong. And the Buckeyes are ranked number six in the CFB. They're on the wrong side of things. No more games to be played. Teams below them are playing games. Teams ahead of them are playing games this week. So there's nothing the Buckeyes could do. They're done. They're out. Unless total chaos comes, which is very unlikely, it is done. So... That leaves Texas. So Texas took care of Texas Tech, destroyed them, and Oklahoma State outlasted BYU. You know, they will get each other. So Texas, Oklahoma State will be our Big 12 title game. Louisville, unfortunately, lost to Kentucky due to turnovers. Uh, Just really, really unlucky turnovers at the worst possible times for the Louisville Cardinal. The Jack Plummer interception was probably pretty bad. It was it was worse than, 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 than you know. Actually, it wasn't. No, it wasn't a fumble. It was a fumble. Actually, he fumbled. Why am I why am I getting my stuff wrong? Watch the game. Why am I getting my stuff wrong? So you know, but there were two turnovers that cost Louisville I, anyway. Louisville was an outside shot to get to the CFP anyway, but they lost to Kentucky, so that took care of Louisville. Georgia, you know they they were struggling a little bit against Georgia Tech. They took care of that, you know, once Georgia got the fizzies out the way, they got the Thanksgiving hangover out the way, they took care of business. Florida State survived against Florida. Florida ain't going bowling. Washington, you know, had to get a late kick against Washington State. And Alabama, the less said about Auburn giving up a deep pass with Jalen Milrow, sending two guys at Jalen Milrow, the better. Because, again, there are two things that Jalen Milrow has been able to do all season long very well. And it is, one, throw the deep ball, and two, run the football. You let him do number one. That's the problem, Auburn. That is the problem. You know, and and Auburn had lost to New Mexico State bad the week before, and they were running all over Alabama. It didn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense at this point. Like, I don't get it. But at least Oregon kept rolling. They they took they beat the they beat the brakes off of Oregon State. Let's just be real. They beat the brakes off of Oregon State. So, you know that by beating Oregon State like that, that eliminated Arizona from the conversation, and so it'll be Oregon Washington for the final Pac-12 championship. And then SMU, then they're going to take on Tulane. SMU took care of business against Navy. SMU has been red hot. Tulane, you know, they 
kept UTSA from getting any momentum. They forced five turnovers in that game on Black Friday. So, yeah, the, the G5 spot will come down to most likely Tulane or Friday night. We'll talk about that in a moment. There weren't enough bowl-eligible teams. Minnesota is a 5-17. They're the only 5-17 that gets to go bowling. Obviously, Army and Navy can't do that because, you know, get, well, they got to set the bowls, you know, be, be, before December the 3rd, yada, yada, yada. I don't – like, some of these bowls don't even want these teams. That's how you know things are bad. You know, we have 12 Sunbelt teams eligible to go bowling. Like, yeah, it, it, it's getting real out here. So, JMU, Jacksonville State, congratulations. You fought the NCAA for nothing. Well, JMU fought the NCAA for nothing. It was going to pan out this way anyway. Um, that's because there's too many bowls, but I don't want to get on the too many bowls train right now. I'll save that tangent for another time. Transfer portal and Black Sundays come. Mike Elko's at AM, and Holgerson, and a bunch of other guys are gone. You know, Holgerson fired from Houston finally. Thank goodness. You know, Houston can now look like a team maybe that can maybe actually win the Big 12 or something like that in football. Uh, guys like KJ Jefferson, Riley Leonard, they're out. They're out of their respective programs. Jefferson, you know, thank goodness he's, you know, gone from Arkansas. He, 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 he I, I don't understand. Riley Leonard is a weird case. He's, I think he's going to Notre Dame. He's been injured all year, so I don't know how that's going to help him out. And then we have a question. You know, the question the question that comes to my mind is, is Jade Daniels the highest been winner? I know people have been talking about Bo Nix and Michael Penix, but come on. Come on. The stats line up. This is the MVP, the most valuable player in college football. The guy. It has to go to Jade Daniels. Don't say Bo Nix, and don't say Michael Penix at the way Penix has been playing. Bo Nix really does play, you know, like four quarters and stuff like that. You know, you have to have a dominant season. Who cares about your defense? You know, we've seen guys with three losses win the Heisman before. Again, you know, RG3, Tebow, you know, just to name a few examples. Um, Lamar Jackson, another example. Those are guys that have won the highest with three losses, so the number of losses a team has does not matter. Uh, the player that does the absolute most is the most deserving. In the discussion, Jay Daniels should be your Heisman winner come the week of the Army-Navy game, December the 9th. So now, we're in the conference championship week. SMU, red hot, two lane. You know, they've been on and off throughout the season, mostly off. They got to bring their A game to the table. Willie Fritz and company have to bring their A game to the table and watch out for Liberty. You know, they're playing a tough New Mexico State team, but watch out for Liberty to snag the G5 spot. Watch out for them. For Florida State, you know, there's, there's really no discussion to be had here. You win against Louisville, you are in. You win, you're in. You lose, losing late is never the recipe for success. You lose this game against Louisville, you are out of the discussion. For Texas, all you got to do is beat Oklahoma State and hope for Florida State to lose. You're not going to get past a Georgia. You're not going to get past a Michigan. And you're not going to get past the Pac-12 winner. Unless chaos goes, you know, you know, weird, but honestly, for, for Michigan and Georgia, we'll talk about Michigan and Georgia in a moment, you know, really, all Texas needs is a Florida State loss and a win. That's all they need to get in. Michigan, all they got to do is beat Iowa's defense. We know that offense ain't doing nothing. We know that offense is, that offense is absolutely garbage for the Iowa Hawkeyes. They couldn't put up anything against Penn State. What makes you think they're going to put up anything against Michigan? We'll find out. We'll find out, though. There's always surprises, you know, come conference championship week. And then Bo Nix versus Michael Penix, round number two. The Oregon-Washington game, the final Pac-12 championship game, for now at least, 
probably forever. And the winner gets a college football playoff berth. The loser of this game is out. Unless chaos happens, which is doubtful, the loser of this game is out. Oregon, if they lose this game, that's two losses. You're you're automatically out. Washington, if you finish undefeated, you beat Oregon twice, you're in. No question. And Georgia, all Georgia needs to do is just beat the Tide. But if the Tide beat Georgia somehow, there's going to be some weird things happening. Again, the weird thing is, is we're going to have maybe a bunch of one-loss teams. You know, we could have an Alabama as SEC champion, a Texas as an SEC champion, an Oregon and a Washington with both with one loss, Michigan unbeaten, Florida State unbeaten. There's all sorts of scenarios that come into play here for conference championship week. So there's a lot going on that needs to be discussed and needs to, you know, kind of play itself out. But really, the scenarios are kind of just there. Again, Alabama needs help. Texas needs less help, but they still need help. Oregon, Washington, Florida State, Georgia, Michigan, all you guys need to do is just win. That's all you need to do. Washington, Michigan, Washington, Oregon will take care of itself. Again, the other three teams I mentioned, all they need to do is win. Ohio State is just kind of a placeholder at number six. They're going to stay right there at number six. Texas and Alabama can jump Ohio State, so. That is all that needs to be said. What a conference championship week. We have seven teams still buying for four spots, which is crazy. And next year we'll have 12. Even though, you know, I don't think 12 is the perfect number. I definitely don't think 12 teams is the right amount. You know, if you're going to expand from four, you need to go to eight. But we didn't go to eight. We went to 12. But it's fine. It's whatever. So I'm going to cap this off here. You know, hopefully you have a great conference championship week starting Friday night. Um, I'm going to get this NFL video out for y'all in a moment, in about an hour or so. I'll put that up, and that'll do it for me. Take care. and Have a good conference championship week. And go Longhorns, of course. <laughs>